Awo shalom ras tefari ne ras yadinos tefari ne. I am Wendem Yadam. And we want to just continue with, this will be probably part four, but it's going to dovetail into this week's Shabbat, this week's particular Shabbat or Senbet. So we say Shalom to the Rastafari and our Ethiopian Hebrew black Jewish brothers and sisters and, and others out there who can receive the Shalom. We say Senbet Salam, Shabbat Shalom. Now, Sabbatical peace this Sabbath, this is the 23rd of December, the 23rd of December uh, 2011. Now, something very interesting happened in the news. I don't know whether you picked up on it, but there was like an earthquake, quote, end quote, earthquake up by uh, Christ Church, the same place that three or so months ago they had a devastating earthquake that took down their um some cathedral or church destroyed a lot of buildings. There was a, a significant loss of, of, of life. And um, the only thing we can say to those people in that place that it's really time for everyone to return to their own um, homeland. And uh, Europeans, too, need to understand that Europe needs them. They need to return to their ancestral homelands. But even if they don't seek to do so, the signs of the times are reminding them about Yahweh's word and the truth of this matter. Now, what we wanted, to, what we didn't finish up on at last time, and just to mention that earthquake, because remember we, we, the whole uh, solstice and the, the equinox, solstice sort of talk, the twenty, the twenty-first December twenty-first, twenty eleven is. The speculation according to the Mayan calendar, the so-called pseudo end of the world and such things. And we're going to get a little bit more into detail into what does the whole 2012 from the Mayan perspective, what does it really say from the hype? There's a lot of hype out there that's connected with a lot of these um, so-called new age themes and concepts. And that's causing more confusion than good if one does not understand the real context of the original, what's the original mess. And this is one reason why we are doing these particular studies is to get to the original context of the original message, looking at it through our Ethiopian per, per uh, spectacle, from an Ethiopian perspective and through our own spectacles, as it were. So. Once again, this is a Shabbat time, and what we're going to continue with this, with the Hala Selassie and the Tower of Babel, we've just posted today, actually, um, the one, two, and three parts of that. That was continuing on the theme of the political crucifixion of, of His Imperial Majesty and some of the questions about the whole crucifixion of Hala Selassie and what does that mean and so forth and so on. So we hope that parts one to two and the particular portion that we did in a, seeking to at least initially address our uh, brethren, Smyrna, Angel, and others that might have that particular concern about that uh, matter of, um, of, of theological, historical, eschatological significance concerning um, Christ and his kingly character. But this week's... Um, Sabbatical, which will be the tenth, the tenth. Um, let's show this again. Like we said, we updated. This is the update that we were speaking about. This is the update right here of our Yesamantawi Senbet or Rit Nabab or our uh, weekly um, or strong Sabbath uh, Torah portion readings and feeding. So we had to update it. And hopefully you've downloaded an updated copy of the um, Torah portion readings and feedings or the weekly Sabbath, the, the sabbatical readings and feedings, which would be known as the weekly quote end quote around weekly, of course, for Rastafari overstanding. And this particular one right here, you really need to download this right here as well. And this is the Rastafari Hebraic um, uh, Judaic year. And then this is the Rastafari um, Hebraic year 81 AB. And this is the Zemena Johannes Wengelawi, the present 
um, dispensation that we're in as we're going into this um, 2012. And this will basically help one's chart within this present time the significant um, holy days um, of key biblical and Hebraic significance to us. And currently, we're in the uh, Hanukkah, the Hanukkah, or the Festival of Light. And we've addressed it, addressed actually the Hanukkah, and the significance of the Hanukkah is with initiation, discipleship, and the whole connection with light and illumination. Some might think Hanukkah is just about burning candles or, or burning, uh, lighting a menorah on that level. The menorah is the symbolic of that. The menorah is a symbolic of that. But it goes much deeper into and in the connection with the seven seals within man and the other sevens of revelation are key and are significant. So the Hanukkah, actually, in our order, it allows us, it's the beginning of really the initiation period or discipleship period. If and when we are properly um, organized in our heads and hearts individually and can come together in a community sense collectively and co-labor and work together, the Hanukkah time would actually be, since it's the first of the Hebraic holy days and times and the significance is initiation would be an ideal time for discipleship after the former high holy days to actually begin. And that's why at the root of Hanukkah from the Hebraic is initiation. And it connects with training as in training a child in the way that he should go and when he is old or mature, when he has to speak for himself, he will not depart from it. So we're in the 10th um, sabbatical portion, and the 10th portion here is known as the Chalam, the Chalam, or in the Hebrew, uh, Miketz, 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 Miketz. And it constitutes Genesis chapter 41 and 1 to Genesis chapter 44 and 17 in the Torah portion of the readings. In the Haftarah, or the Nabiyat, the prophetical, we have, um, we have 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 15 to 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. And in the Hadith Kidan, or the New Covenant, the Barit, the Barit, or Barit Hadasha, according to the Ibrayist, we have Romans chapter 10, verses 1 to verse 13. Now, let's get a, a, a general overview, and we haven't done this in a couple of weeks or a couple of um, um, subais or cement, cement torch. You know, um, we haven't been able to go into some of the details. We need to probably go into some of the de details right now. Now, as you know, this is book one. This is a, a, a kind of a compilation of some of the online materials concerning the Torah portion readings and feedings from a from a European Judaic perspective. And that does not discount it, but it's not to include it all, but to familiarize the purpose of these particular Torah portions. Uh, Shemot, which is the names, or Simoch, Simoch is coming for, but this is Bereshit, you understand, which means Genesis or Barasit, first part, which has the Torah, the 12 portions of the Torah readings and feedings from what is known as the Orthodox, the Orthodox um, Jewish perspective. So in the Society of His Majesty, we find it to be in good keeping with our order and discipline for us to first understand what the other side of the story, or overstand their portion while we still learn and compare and contrast with our Ethiopian Hebrew roots and truths. So we actually seek to train our minds to be able to distinguish, like the taste buds, to be able to distinguish different types of tastes and what's good food from what's bad food. And there's a lot that we can learn even from the OJs or the other Jews from the religious or the discipline of the faith. And we can get out of what a lot of uh, lost sheep people always say and do 
if we were like the Jews. We are the Hebrews, but what we have lost is our covenant way of life and the discipline. So this is miketz, miketz. And miketz means at the end or the chalam and afterwards. And it's the second word, the first distinctive word of the parasha or the kufu. And this is the 10th weekly Torah or the Orit Nebab, Torah portion, reading and feeding, in the annual Hebraic or Jewish cycle of Torah reading. And as we mentioned, it constitutes Genesis chapter 41 and 1. So let's get our Schofield Study Bible to Genesis chapter 41 and 1. And as you can see, we have about one, two, about two more we weeks or two more Senbets or Shabbats in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis. And this particular book that we published recently, the Bereshit, the Bereshit or the Barasit, it covers actually, this is the portion that it covers, the Genesis portion. Now, Shemot would cover Exodus, and that comes up at the 13th. So when we get to the 13th of the 13th Sabbath. Now, since Hanukkah, we don't really know how the other Jews actually do this. We have to probably go check on it because for some of the high holy days, for the high holy days, some of the Torah portion readings are kind of suspended and it's just a focus on the high holy days. Speaking of those seven, those seven or so holidays that take place at three times in the year, three seasons in the year to um, worship and praise the one true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, Yeshua HaMoshiach, otherwise known as the Jesus Christus or Jesus Christ. So this portion begins from Genesis 41 and 1, and here we have the dream of Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh. Now, this is the 10th Sabbath after the Simchat Torah, or after your Orit Desita or the the fish the fish ha the fish ha or read. Now, if you want to get more information on that, you need to download the the newest um, the updated the updated version of this right here. The updated version of this. Though it has them hearts on the outside, it's basically the English the chart on the inside, and we go into some more of the details answering some of the concerns and questions of brothers and sisters. They, like, they see the 54 portions. How do we know what to read when? So we have to know the beginnings, how the year actually moves. And this is why we try to give these updates so that over time, others will learn and will understand it. And they also, each one can teach one. So we as one are 